Welcome to this online worship service of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Shelter Rock. I'm the Reverend Jay Brooks and I minister to this congregation along with the Reverend Dr. Natalie Fenimore and the Reverend Jennifer Brower. Although we continue to be physically distant to protect public health, we also continue to create loving religious community, encourage spiritual growth, and build a more just and joyful world. At noon every Sunday, everyone is welcome at our virtual coffee hour to meet new friends and to see the faces of friends we already know. Today we remember the United States service members who have given their lives for our country. We remember as well the essential workers who daily risk their lives to keep our country going. As we remember them, may our response bring meaning to their sacrifices and bring meaning to the lives of all who continue on. With love and joy, we are gathered in community thanks to the miracle of technology and the persistence of the human spirit. Lift up your faces. You have a piercing need for this bright morning dawning for you. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived, but it can be faced with courage and need not be lived again. Lift up your eyes upon this day breaking for you. Give birth again to the dream. I invite you to join me in these familiar chalice lighting words. We light this chalice the symbol of Unitarian Universalism. This is a faith of an open mind. This is a faith of a loving heart. This is a faith of helping hands. Together we take care of our earth and work for peace and friendship in our world.
Each Sunday, we invite members and friends to donate to a special collection. This week, we once again invite donations to support the Long Island Council of Churches Food Pantry. Now, maybe you haven't been able to give as much as you might like each week. Maybe you've given only once in recent weeks. But our contributions matter. Each and every one of them matters. And together, they add up. To date, we have donated more than $6,000 in monies raised during our special collections during this time of social distancing. In the words of the Sufi Muslim poet Rumi, every tree, every flower, every growing thing as it grows says this truth. You harvest what you sow. With life as short as a half-taken breath, do not plant anything but love. Each week, the offering is an invitation to plant love in this world. Your donation helps to feed individuals and couples and families who would otherwise be hungry. Because of social distancing, we ask that you please contribute online this is still new for many of us, but it is simple to plant love. And that feeling you get when you harvest what you've sown is priceless. Choose the method that's most convenient for you. If you choose to give through our website, please click on Donate on the homepage menu bar and then click Donate Now. Then scroll down and choose Special Collection. Thank you. For your contributions. When I was little, I loved to visit my grandparents. I went to their house a lot until I was about 10 years old. That's when they moved to a big place with a lot of other old people and their helpers. In my family, we called my grandfather Papa. I don't know why, but that's what we called him. Whenever I visited, he always had a project for us to work on together. I was about seven when he first said it. I walked into the kitchen one morning and found him there. Hi, Papa, I said. What are we going to do today? Papa said, hi, JJ. Today, today we are going to make meaning. Make what? I said. Last time we made a birdhouse. How could we use Papa's tools to make meaning? Papa said, you will see. We went out and got our bikes. Papa put on his backpack. He picked up a tall, skinny package and put it into his bike basket. What's that? I said. Papa said, you will see. We rode our bikes to a playground. Papa got something out of his backpack. It unfolded like a transformer. It was a shovel. Papa said, now we dig. We took turns digging a hole. It wasn't wide, but it was as deep as my arm. Then Papa opened the tall package. It was a little tree. Wow, I said, we're planting a tree? Papa said, yes, we're planting a tree. And we did. When the tree was planted, we stood back and looked at it. It looked good, but I had a question. Did we just make meaning? Papa said, yes, we've planted a tree that will grow and be a home for birds and shade for people. It will live longer than you or me. When we plant a tree, we're part of something big, very big. We're part of a better future. I said, is that meaning? Papa said, yes, we just made your life and my life have more meaning. After that day, whenever I visited and the weather was nice, we planted a tree. It always started with me asking, Papa, what are we going to do today? And Papa saying, today, JJ, we are making meaning. On the very last day my grandparents lived in that house, we planted a tree. We made meaning. Years later, when I was all grown up, I took my kids to look at it. It was very big. Birds sang. We had a picnic in its shade. We put our hands on the tree. Someone asked, is this Papa's tree? 
I said, this is everyone's tree, but it's Papa's meaning. Even as we seem so far, far apart, always we're together in our hearts. We can make the circle we're dreaming of if we dance in the light of love. So much has changed, but one thing's the same. Love is our shield and a shelter. Though the chill wind keeps on howling, one message tried and true. You're with me and I'm with you. Even as the world seems riven in two, struggle as we might to just make do. We can make the circle we're dreaming of if we dance in the light of love. Dance in the light. You're with me and I'm with you. Let's dance. The words of Archibald MacLeish. The young dead soldiers do not speak. Nevertheless, they are heard in the still houses. Who has not heard them? They have a silence that speaks for them at night and when the clocks count. They say, we were young, we have died, remember us. They say we have done what we could, but until it is finished, it is not done. They say we have given our lives, but until it is finished, no one can know what our lives gave. They say, our deaths are not ours. They are yours. They will mean what you make of them. They say whether our lives and our deaths were for peace and for new hope or for nothing we cannot say. It is you who must say this. We leave you our deaths. Give them their meaning. We were young, they say. We have died. Remember us. Amen.
Making meaning. It's what humans do, what we long to do, at least most of us. We yearn to create lives with meaning and purpose and significance beyond our own little moment. Some make meaning by planting a tree so that years later, others may sit in its shade. Some make meaning by giving their lives to a cause, for a purpose. Some die for that cause, and we remember them. In 1981, Maya Lin was a 21-year-old architecture student in her senior year at Yale University. Her class assignment was to design a memorial and she chose to remember the U.S. service members who lost their lives in the Vietnam War. Maya Lin got a B on the assignment, but her unusual and creative design was chosen from more than 1,400 to become the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. It was chosen even over the design submitted by the Yale professor who gave her the B. Maya Lin's drawings showed a wall rising from the sunken walkway and bearing the names of 58,000 dead and missing in action. People decried this design. It was unconventional. It had no image of a valiant warrior. It wasn't a larger-than-life statue on a pedestal. It was too simple, they said. It was not respectful. One sunny spring day after the Vietnam Veterans Memorial opened, I went down to the National Mall to see it for myself. I walked over to the grove of trees that sheltered the entrance to the memorial, which lay alongside the reflecting pool. I will never, never forget that walk. The path slanted gently downward, inviting entry. As I descended, the wall rose above me, each step taking me deeper and deeper into the Hall of the Dead. Here and there, people had placed flowers or ribbons at the base of the wall beneath the names, the names, the names, the names did not speak, but they had a silence that spoke for them in the stillness. It was quiet. Gone were the noises that filled the air at ground level, the rush of traffic, the blare of automobile horns, the uplifted, pedantic voices of tour guides, the gleeful cries of children playing at the edge of the reflecting pool, and the occasional bark of dogs and parents. These sounds were no more. There was only the silence of the names one after another, lined in precise rows along the wall. We were young. We have died. Remember us. Near the midpoint of the walkway, in the deepest part of the memorial, I saw a man huddled at the base of the wall. He held a medal in his hand, it dangled from a brightly colored ribbon. He knelt at the base of the wall with his forehead touching the wall, and one hand reached up to touch a single name. He was too young to be a father, but I couldn't tell if he was son, brother, comrade. I could tell that his heart ached with loss and regret. And he knelt there as I passed quietly by. He knelt there in the echoing silence of the names of the dead. We leave you our deaths. Give them their meaning. In this community today, there are many stories of loss some of us know some of those stories. 
but no one can know all the stories, all the losses that other human beings have suffered. Whether those losses are connected to war, whether they are losses connected to other suffering, each one of us has known loss. With the emergence of a global pandemic, there is more loss, more suffering. Sometimes we try not to think about it. But inevitably we do. And we wonder why, why must we suffer? If we were to list our losses like names on a wall, what would they mean? I'm sure of only one thing. The meaning is what we make afterwards. No loss comes inscribed with previously assigned meaning. Each loss is a name on a wall, etched in our consciousness, palpable, unforgettable. If our losses are to have any meaning at all, that meaning comes from what we do after we move out of the depths and into the sunlight. It's pointless to shackle ourselves to the place of deepest despair. The meaning of the loss doesn't come from the loss. The loss doesn't express its own meaning. The meaning comes from ourselves. We are the ones who take and shape a loss. We are the meaning makers. History, without its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived. But if faced with courage, need not be lived again. It is our greatest, most difficult task to rise from the wailing wall and move into the future with a broken heart and yet with a determination to make meaning. We remember the losses, the pain, the sacrifice. How will we give them meaning? Because we are here now and we shape the future. That day long ago at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, Something in me broke, and from the broken places, something new emerged. Ground is broken for graves, for gardens. In memory, we hear the chunk scrape of the shovel. I walked deep into the Vietnam Veterans Memorial on a sunny spring day. The base of the memorial was dark with loss and the names of the young dead soldiers. I walked on. And when I emerged, a resolve had sprouted from my soul's broken earth. I watered it with my tears. Abraham Lincoln, at his second inauguration, faced the aftermath of a terrible war. He described for all American citizens the task ahead, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and for his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. There have been many wars since. From each one arises the voices, the voices of young soldiers who have died. In this pandemic, we have seen arise a new breed of heroes, nurses, doctors, EMTs, bus drivers and grocery store clerks, those who deliver our groceries and so many other items that come to our homes these days. Some have gotten sick. Some have died. In the months to come, others who work in a wide array of industries that serve the people of this country, that serve our nation, will also die. On Memorial Day, we honor those who died for ideals we cherish. We remember them let us not stop with remembrance, with platitude. On Memorial Day, we honor those who died for ideals we cherish. We remember them, but let us not stop with remembrance, 
with platitudes. Platitudes don't honor those who've died, those who risk and sacrifice on our behalf. We can honor them only by our living. We make meaning of their deaths, of their lives, and of our lives by what we do. We remember, and then we make meaning.
It is possible and imperative that we learn a brave and startling truth. And when we come to it, to the day of peacemaking, we, this people on this small and drifting planet whose hands can strike with such abandon that in a twinkling life is sapped from the living. Yet those same hands can touch with such healing, irresistible tenderness. When we come to it, we, the people on this wayward, floating body, cradled on this earth, of this earth, have the power to fashion for this earth. A climate where every man and every woman can live without sanctimonious piety, without crippling fear. When we come to it, when and only when, we come to it. The time has come for us to extinguish the flame of our chalice. We do so with these words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we meet again.